how's the fuel situation in your area? I don't know where, where you are. No. For those of you in Nigeria, this question is for those of you in Nigeria. <laughs> Particularly, you know, in Lagos. Um, uh, if you have fear, let me know. <laughs> but that's the, you know, thing a number of people are talking about. And since 2021, I think, the federal government has ramped up conversations around uh, conversion to compressed natural gas for vehicles. And a number of vehicles are already using them. But there have been concerns, and there are concerns. And hey, there are those who talk about a number of significant disadvantages that natural gas vehicles may not match the speed performance of gasoline-powered vehicles, that uh, large tanks uh, need, uh, you, that you may need space for a large storage tank that can reduce uh, your trunk space, you know, the boot of your car, that's what you'd call it here. Lower performance, the, the natural gas vehicles may have lower mileage efficiency due to additional weight of the uh, gas tank. Um, natural gas fueling station, refueling stations are less common than traditional ones. Um, despite its abundance, natural gas is still a non-renewable fuel source and so many other things, including high conversion costs. Of course, the, the federal government is doing its bit, but then perhaps we have our own uh, also to do. Let's have conversations this morning around the viability of CNG vehicles with um, Mr. Kaudi, Dr. Kaudi Okpaifa, Executive Director, Center for Sustainable, for Sustainable Mobility and Access Development. He joins us here in the studio. Thanks for joining us this yeah, morning. Good morning. We also have Mr. Michael Oluwagbemi, who is the Project Director and CEO of the Presidential Compressed Natural Gas Initiative. He joins us uh, virtually. Thank you, Mr. Oluagbemi, for joining us this morning. Okay, I believe that we'll get in uh, later. So, well, let me begin with you, Dr. Kwefa. Um This conversation um, has been on since like circa 1997. So, uh, what's your take on the fears Maybe I should ask you, first of all, how far so far? How well do you see this being embraced? What are the challenges that you're seeing and all of that? Okay, uh, thank you very much and uh, good morning. Let me join you in uh, come straight to the victims of the building collapse in the Joss and those who are injured. And uh, to just hope that uh, we'll find the way around this uh, collapse, and especially during the rating season. Um, going to the, uh, what I found with this uh, discussion, let me start by saying that uh, uh, there is no option now, worldwide, that we just have to move forward as technology improves, so also is the world going towards sustainability, especially when it comes to energy sources. Now, the CNG discussion is centered around, uh, I will put it like three E's. You need to look at uh, um, energy security and energy sustainability. In terms of Nigeria, energy security is key. Energy sustainability is also key. Then you have economic sustainability. Then you have environmental correctness. When you look at those three issues, the world is moving from fossil fuel to renewable energy and much more less um, um, polluting form of energy. So that brings the issue of um, whether you stay with fossil fuel, you stay with natural fuel, or you go electric, or you go solar, or all those other options. So in the next future, in the next five years, the whole world is moving towards these directions, and we have to move as well. Are we late? It's better late than never. So whether we like it or not, then on economic front, it is cheaper to go that route because it is abundant, it's available. Yeah. On safety side, it is safer. And also, it reduces emissions. And what that does is it makes life better. So <laughs> it is the reality now. Are we doing enough? Yes. 
Could we have done much more uh, than now? Yes. But <laughs> do we have an option now? Really, I don't think we have that much option than to move. Some countries in the world, we stop producing uh, vehicles. So manufacturer, we stop producing vehicles that use petrol in the next five years. Some countries have also come up with uh, uh, vehicle standards that says for public transportation, vehicles that runs on uh, 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 petrol will no longer be allowed. We are also in just ramping up our production capacity in the area of vehicle manufacturing. So the earlier, the better. We have the gas. They take the gas from there. Most of these countries I'm talking about don't even have the gas that we have in abundance. They don't even have the 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 the, 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 the fuel, the fossil fuel. They get them from us. But they have moved. And the world is going to leave us behind if we don't join. On the, on, on the, on the economic scene, believe me, it keeps more money in the pocket. It's cheaper to run this kind of vehicles. It's cheaper to use this kind of fuel as your uh, energy source for your mobility equipment. So it's going to keep more money in people's pocket and it's going to make the economy of the world and the economy of Nigeria even better. But how about the disadvantages? The one of which recently people talked about the proneness to explosions. That's not correct. And I will explain. Now, um, uh, compressed natural gas is made up of betaine. Methane is CH4, I mean, for those who understand chemistry, that is one carbon for hydrogen. Um, um, if you talk of LPG, that is the cooking gas, those are the ones that are prone to explosions. Those ones are made of uh, propane and butane. That but is, you are not unaware of the recent occurrence. I'm going, to, I'm going to use it. I just want to give the background for people to understand that. It is the carbon chain and the hydrogen chains the components that make these gases that make them different. One is compressed gas into gas. One is uh, liquefied gas, that it is uh, liquid pressured, and that is the LPG. Now, the, because of uh, uh, the nature of methane, the, 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 I want to use the language that people understand, the cylinder that contains a CNG, a special cylinder, it is by extrusion made. And what there is no explosion in the incidents at um, Ogun State. What you had was, you know, the team was carrying skids. You notice that the skids, none of them went busted. Do you notice that? Mm. None of them got busted. What you had was there was a leak in, the, in one of the four cylinders. It was that leak that caught fire. Now, just oppose that. So the incidents in front of a, a um, beside Sheraton Hotel some times ago, where a gas, something carrying the uh, LPG, got leaked, and the, the, the gas went in the air and got exploded and affected that restaurant beside, I, I think that's Opic, Plus, Opic Restaurant. Now, what you have is uh, CNG is lighter. So when there is a leak, or, or, or release, what CNG will do is that it will disappear into the atmosphere faster t uh, compared to when you have LPG. So we need to differentiate between LPG, the one that we use in cooking in the house, and CNG. CNG is lighter. It's made of one carbon chain, while uh, LPG is made of butane, propane, and those ones are C4 and uh, C5. They are heavier carbon sources. So it is even safer. And the nature of the uh, cylinder is much more is is safer than when you have which leads me to the question of space okay that's most true. of the examples that, that, that we've seen yeah, yeah. they are they, they put the tanks in the trunks that's correct so yeah the issue of space is is a matter of perception because the one we have been using before also uses space that is your tank well, so I don't see the tank. No, I don't see well, that space, I'm saying so. that it's an issue. It's an issue. You're right. It's an issue. But the space in my trunk, in my vehicle, in the boot, if I use the scripture, <laughs> in the boot, how much of those spaces do you really use? For those who use spaces, yeah, it would be an issue for them. But for me and regular people who do public transportation, yeah, you might consider the space. But what as 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 if it is a brand new design, that will have been taken care of. But if it is for conversion, you're going to lose 
that space. That is for sure. But the question is, for the cost of money you save, for the safety you carry about, and for the uh, uh, sustainability me and you will enjoy from it, it is better to sacrifice that space for this value. Yes, the cylinder has to occupy, because it is a conversion. But if it is a brand new vehicle, they will have considered that into the design. I, I saw a brand new tricycle. You know, I don't like tricycle that much. And the thing is just under the seat. So it's not occupying any unusual okay. space. So, so I think that will come with brand new. But for conversion, yes, you are going to lose some amount of space in whatever you have. But that okay. space is what you can actually trade off. Okay, let's see if, the, uh, if our guests on, uh, that have guests in the virtual space is with us now. Mr. Oluagbemi, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you uh, hear me loud and clear? Wonderful. Good morning. We can hear you loud and clear. So, please tell us how far so yeah. far, um, well, especially concerning this um, initiative, the Presidential Compressed Natural Gas Initiative. How far so far? Thank you very much, and thanks for having me on your program. Uh, I want to use uh, this opportunity also to commiserate with uh, all Nigerians on the uh, with respect to the recent incident in Plateau State, and I wish um, all the the people of, and government of Plateau State all the best as we try to combat the issues surrounding uh, issues uh, concerning uh, building collapses, and uh, we get to it very quickly. Uh, with respect to the compressed natural gas, uh, it's very important for us to understand that uh, Nigeria is a gas country that happens to have oil. For far too long, Nigeria has depended on the inferior product, uh, which is crude oil. And even that, we are not a crude oil refining country. So not only have we um, failed to refine crude oil, but we then import and subsidize it, effectively subsidizing unemployment and importing poverty. What we are asking us to do, what the president is asking us to do with the Compressed Natural Gas Initiative is to move Nigeria towards a gas future, a future where Nigeria is using the product which is so much blessed with, uh, the largest gas reserves in Africa uh, that can last us over 100 years with respect to what is already found. And also a natural gas reserve that we control the price in such that Nigerians are not paying any price for issues around the international relations with respect to crude oil that we currently do at the pump. We also have more energy security and more reliability. As the previous speaker has spoken, natural gas is cheaper, it's cleaner, it's safer, and more reliable. These are attributes of natural gas that compels and compel the president to move Nigeria towards using CNG, not just for industries and power, as we already utilize the natural gas for, but to begin to use it for transportation. For the presidential CNG initiative, our mandate was three. Uh, when the president inaugurated the CNG initiative last year, October, was one that we should incentivize the adoption of CNG across Nigeria. That two, we should we should close the funding gap with respect to the infrastructure for distribution and uh, the, the availability of uh, compressed natural gas across Nigeria with respect to vehicles and transportation. And lastly, to help engender and develop a regulatory framework for natural gas adoption for vehicular transportation. I'll say, I'll say that we've, gone, we've done very well in the last six months. When we first started, there were just seven conversion centers in Nigeria that we could boast of, that we could accredit. So today we have well over 123 of them. When we first started this program, there were less than 12 uh, dispensing stations for the, uh, multiple vehicles. As we speak currently, there are over 100 of them under development. Uh, we've launched about 35 of them in the last two months alone. NMPC launched six just last week. Um, NIPCO is launching nine of them. BOVAS is launching eight. Several private companies are beginning to come into the sector to invest in the sector. Mother stations were just 23 of them where we started. And most of these mother stations were primarily catering to the power sector. Today, we, are, we have well over 30 mother stations and an additional 18 on that development either by NMPC or its partners as well as related partners. So that speaks a lot with respect to the, uh, uh, to the progress we are making on the ground when it comes to the adoption of CNG vehicles. In addition to that, the federal government, the government of President Bola Ahmed, you know, on the, uh, have actually gone, uh, uh, achieved significant steps in, with respect to encouraging this adoption. The Ministry of Finance, utilizing 100 billion naira from the Palliative Fund, have been able to order well over 5,500 
regular platform, both, both tricycles and buses that are already well on ground. Some of them are now going to be deployed in the next week or so. In addition to that, over 21,000 conversion kits have been acquired. You know, uh, and we're uh, beginning to pilot uh, that. We launched that. Mr. Yeah. Luagwemi, if, if you can hear me well, um, we hear you. Uh, yes. I, but I'm, I'm, I'm looking at a document here that dates back to 2020. And it was one in which it's yeah. actually included in the bouncing back program of, uh, of the government of the day, the uh, National Economic Sustainability Plan. One of those was right. the National Gas Expansion Program. And one of the objectives, the major objective actually, of that plan is to launch a national program to promote domestic use of CNG and support the creation of one million jobs. Uh, part of the elements is to implement a detailed CNG penetration plan. And what is interesting is that on the one hand, it was uh, supposed to be implemented by the Ministry of Petroleum Resources and the NNPC, uh, beg your pardon, yes, NNPCL, now NNPCL. But what is question, what, what I'm looking for uh, in my head, even in the document here, is how the states have embraced it. At the last at in that plan, it was supposed to start with a 12-state pilot with, in the six geopolitical zones. How are the states faring in that regard? Is this something that the federal government is solely doing, the presidential committee is solely working on, or is it something that the partnership, there is partnership with the states and the states themselves are coming up with infrastructure to the effect. Yes, thank you very much. Good question. The reality is that the plan which you are, uh, which you just mentioned was the previous plan under the immediate past administration. When President Bola met in the book came into office and working with the steering committee, through the steering committee, uh, we have put together get a different plan that is more realistic and more practical. Uh, the current plan calls for the expansion from the current, what we call the five primary CNG states, where CNG is widely available, which is uh, Lagos, Ogun, Rivers, uh, uh, Kogi, and FCT, and to build forward from those states to expand towards the immediate surrounding states and ensure penetration through the mass transit sector. And But those states also have a key role to play, as you've already mentioned, because mass transit, if we do not forget, is a primary responsibility of state governments. And so we are working collaboratively with the state government. For example, in Ogun State, the government, the governor had invested in buses. In Lagos, again, Lagos had co-invested with Axela and uh, the former one to Axela to invest in CNG buses as well that are widely deployed, as well as with companies like Femadec. In uh, uh, in uh, even in states that states that are surrounding these immediate states, for example, FCT is also deploying some clean buses as well. But even in the immediate surrounding states, we are beginning to now expand beyond these five primary states to the ten states through what we call our refueling expansion program that is expanding the footprint of CNG from these five primary states to an additional ten. And we are collaborating with state governments to achieve that. In Kwara State, on page twenty nine, we launched the first refueling stations under this program. And the state government contributed significantly, not just to providing the site, but to also provide the uh, 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 direct support to the private company that is doing that in Quara State when we launched in Elori. In coming days, we'll be launching similar programs in other states, including Enugu, in Abia, as well as in Port Harcourt, in River State. We'll be doing the same thing in the MENA, where the governor of the state have already acquired 200 CNG buses, but we're going to be providing a refueling site. Mm -hmm. So you are seeing a state-federal government collaboration along the lines of expanding the CNG footprint nationally. But even beyond state and federal government, it's actually the private sector. And the president was very clear from the one that our job is not to replace the private sector's initiative. And at the end of the day, business should be in the business of doing business. And so what we are trying to do as, a, as, as an initiative is to be a catalyst, such as we are the one enabling business to do business, the business of CNG. Because all the, even all the gasoline stations you have today in Nigeria, most of them, if not all of them, are owned by the private sector. But the private sector is being incentivized. In this, in this area, the federal government in December, through the committee working with the Federal Ministry of Finance, announced the waiver for the sector. 
So there's not just an import duty waiver, there's also a VAT waiver that was declared for the sector that have then attracted well over $50 million of investment since December. Okay. Beyond that, in the month of the federal government also published concessionary gas prices mm. for the sector such that auto gas, auto CNG was, is being priced much You know, at the end of the day, that. Mr. Luagwemi, uh, it's what experiences people have that will make all the difference. So, well, uh, Dr. Kwefa, I mean, you have, wherever you go, you always come back to Lagos, so we can always call you a Lagos boy like the president. But the <laughs> question that I'm, I want to ask you here is... The experience people have or have had in accessing the CNG, the conversion costs, for instance, is, is humongous. There are those who say it is something in the region of two to three hundred thousand to convert your vehicle from uh, gas uh, from petrol powered to CNG powered. That's a lot of money in this economy, in this particular economy. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. Um, uh, the qu issue of uh, uh, accessibility also has to do with affordability. And uh, um, government, to my knowledge, has been doing a lot, just like uh, Engineer Mike said, to make sure it is uh, uh, available, it is uh, also affordable. And the first thing is what you mentioned, the National Gas uh, uh, Commercialization Project, which has... Uh, 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 focus on uh, extending the gas pipelines all across the country, the AKK, the Nigeria Morocco, the uh, AHL, the OB3, and all those uh, uh, gas projects that were commissioned sometimes around uh, May. And uh, also, like uh, he said, we started seeing the stations, the gas stations, because the, we've seen one in Elasa Maja recently. They've done about 12 recently. And all these are what the people need to adopt or to accept. Now, coming to cost, yes, the initial cost is uh, much more than uh, people can imagine. But the reality is that uh, it becomes cheaper over a period of 12 months because uh, whatever you must have spent in acquiring the uh, conversion uh, uh, system, you get back in the cost. When you compare 600 uh, Naira versus uh, 200 to 250 Naira per same uh, um, quantity of uh, efficiency. And you just suppose that as to what you save over a period of um, one year, you see that you have gained close to a, about a million, most likely. Now, in order to make people to adopt it, the government, uh, through the, uh, uh, the uh, presidential committee headed by engineer uh, uh, Michael Oluagbemi, has come up with a scheme that gives 50% uh, discount to people who want to uh, convert their vehicle. And I also understand you have a almost 100% uh, discount, at least for now, for the conversion kit for people in commercial uh, vehicles, because it is they that it is the people in the uh, public transportation sector that should first adopt for, 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 to make the greatest impact, and also for government uh, uh, vehicles. Yeah. The initial cost is a limitation, but uh, you must not allow. We must not allow a limitation to allow us to get to our 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 our, our eventual. I, I'm refraining myself, uh, Doctor Okwefa, from putting you on the spot. But let me ask you: How no, many I'm state ready, governors? How many state governors have their vehicles powered by CNG? Okay, I can tell you I know for sure Ogu State. As you can see, I, on coming here, I saw a, a, a big, they call it BRT buses in Nigeria. This mass transit buses, Ogu State colored, and it says I am CNG powered. The last time I was in Kaduna, that was around May 15. I also saw a tricycle that, is a, a, that says a CNG powered. And I know these are... Uh, 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 I'm actually talking about the state government. Now, when they now come to, come to Lagos, Lagos state governor just announced that before December, we will start seeing a new about 2,000 CNG vehicles are in the process. I'm of, talking about their own official vehicles, with Dr. Pfeiffer. Uh, no, no, I don't work for state government. I don't work for state government. But I can tell you that the program that is ongoing now, the, the this CNG initiative program. Uh, as as a component that uh, uh, new government vehicles are now to be CNG powered, and that many state government, I know Kwara State has committed, I know Kaduna, I was at uh, the Kaduna stakeholder, the North 
Northern Nigeria stakeholder uh, event. Kaduna is committed. I know Gombe State Government is committed to this, and they've started making moves. Uh, which other state was it? Nasarawa State Government. So, so you may not start seeing the effect until it is uh, made public, but many, many of our state that has the uh, CNG gas station infrastructure have started making effort. I also add, when we add the Lagos State, uh, Lagos Southwest stakeholder for and also add interaction with the representative of the Commissioner for Energy in Lagos State, who also mentioned many of the things Lagos State government is uh, uh, doing to encourage through Ibile oil and gas, you know, Lagos State government, through Ibile oil and gas to encourage the provision. So if you don't have the stations all over the country, it, you cannot just converting, be converting your vehicle or procuring. But I know as a directive from the federal government is that all new vehicles purchased would love to be CNG powered. And I know, I can tell you this, that I know that a lot, many of the state governments are already uh, uh, entering your studio. I got a call from Cross River State, uh, from the Ministry of Transportation, asking about some of the questions they've asked me to help them intervene in. And the question I ask is that you confirm availability of gas, and they've confirmed they have gas. So the state government, too, is, most of the state governments are it's actually the place I'm going moves. because if the if the so state we are in the adoption stage now. If the state governments have adopted, Ad to, you know, to to use your word, uh, it'll be easier for us to see. Okay, the the lead our leaders are already doing it, so we are getting examples from them. Mr. Oluagbemi, perhaps I'll ask you the same question. At the federal level, I remember, and I'll always make reference to this. That uh, the, uh, the Mr. Ben Akabo is a DG budget officer at some point said that there are more than a thousand five hundred um, ministries, departments, or about one thousand five hundred ministries, departments, and agencies of the federal government. If this adoption is to go anywhere, it'll be good to see the example from them. So, how many of them would you say have adopted CNG for their own official vehicles? Then Nigerians can begin to say, okay, well, our leaders are using them again so uh, already, so why don't we adopt it as well? Yeah, so to your question, um, I can say that we are beginning to see significant adoption by government institutions. Nonetheless, because the president himself actually directed that going forward, no, the minimum required uh, vehicle that will be approved by the Federal Executive Council will be CNG enabled. Uh, as we saw from the announcement in the second week of, Ma of May, when uh, uh, various vehicles were actually stepped down from, from up for approval at the FEC level once they were proposed, because the federal government, under the insistence of Mr. President, insisted that these have to be CNG enabled. So currently we've seen customs, we've seen FRSC, uh, among several agencies, even the FCT, going ahead to acquire CNG vehicles or ac acquiring CNG vehicles as we speak. Uh, the Nigerian Army uh, undertaking a CNG vehicle um, a conversion, which we led 30 of the vehicles. And I have to say the Nigerian Army is the biggest spender in the, in the federal government of Nigeria. You consider the fact that the Ministry of Defense has the biggest budget, the Nigerian Army constitutes is 60-70% of that expenditure. So if the Nigerian Army is the biggest spender in the federal government of Nigeria as a unit, uh, and they're already doing conversions and they're looking at acquiring additional CNG vehicles. You can be rest assured that uh, where, where the army leads, others follow, and that, that, that the government is very serious about uh, uh, CNG adoption. Beyond that, if you recall that when we first started this program, uh, we also uh, made sure that the state house staff in October last year, we donated two vehicles to the state house staff for commuting that are currently using CNG. I checked with the permanent secretary of the state house, and they are very well appreciative of this cost, how these are lower their cost of operation, because uh, CNG vehicles operate at about 70% saving relative to petrol vehicles. So this is not just a tool of just demonstrating, oh, federal government is using CNG, or your leader is using CNG, so you should use it. It's also a tool talking about budget and the budget office that you, that you just mentioned. Talking about budget, my apologies. Talking about budget, budget, how much will the federal government save if, I mean, if you, you may not even be able to talk specifics, but percentage-wise, in terms of budgeting, how much will be saved if anyone would convert to CNG on the long run, as Dr. Okwefa said? 
Yeah, so let me, I will just say federal government, I will say for anybody. So a vehicle currently using um, about 50,000 naira a week, let's say 40 to 50,000 naira a week, we'll begin to use about 8,000 naira a week. So you're talking about seven. Uh, how, how much? Out of the how day. much? Yes, uh, that much, because you're talking about 230 naira per kg, uh, equivalent GG relative to 650 to almost 850 naira today for petrol. Right, and almost 1,200, 1,300 for diesel. So there's a vast difference between 230 naira and 650 naira. So the, the, that savings goes directly to you. So if you consider the fact that you're doing about 30,000, 35,000 naira of savings a week for an average car user, not even a mass transit, but a mass transit vehicle, the savings is about 70,000 naira a week, which will translate to almost uh, 240,000 naira a month and almost 3 million naira a year, right? And you can imagine what that savings means for them in terms of increase, increased profit, even if they decide to just share 50% of that with the public and they keep 50% of the profit margin to themselves, they're taking home about 1.5 million naira a year. So uh, for mass transit vehicles, for private vehicles, there's savings all around. And both, all of these savings are just the personal savings. The greater savings is the savings to the Nigerian people. Today, we have, there's what we call an implicit subsidy because it's an opportunity cost for Nigeria selling its crude oil for the use of domestic instead of using it for CNG. All our neighbors around us, I just I was in Cameroon about three weeks ago, and uh, fuel is selling in Cameroon for about 1,600 naira per litre. In Nigeria, we're selling at 650 naira per litre. In Niger, it's going for 1,700. In the Republic, it's going for 1,400. So we are better off selling what we are currently utilizing in terms of petrol to our neighbors, and then we use gas, which is much cheaper. So the implicit subsidy that Nigeria gives to each commercial bank with every year is about six to seven million naira per year. Okay. It's that's why the federal government have done the calculation to say that we are better off giving them free kids so that they convert, so that we stop giving that six to seven million naira implicit subsidy. Okay. And then they will be All right. cheaper. A, 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 a good one. Money. I can see that uh, Dr. Poefai already has his pen and paper and he's doing some <laughs> math here. <laughs> Okay, you've also done some, some math, so uh, what uh, will we save? Yeah, without being too specific, but from, from literature and what people within the uh, mobility sector and the NI sector are projecting is about 10 trillion within Lagos, FCT, Kano, and River State alone, annually. That will be saved. Could be, that's the economy will be saved. 10 trillion. About now. 10 trillion now. If you consider, just like if you consider the number of vehicles in circulation uh, in use, uh, and the the especially in the public transportation sector, and you multiply this with the amount of service that will be in people's pocket, that will be in the the efficiency in the economy is about ten trillion in just four states. Now you also talked about. I'm not talking of the entire country <laughs> now, because those four states account for close to um, uh, forty percent. Mm. of the entire vehicles in Nigeria. We have less than two minutes, but um, it, it, the, the viability that we're talking about here, the challenge for people that they're trying to put in their heads is, if I do this, why, how will I not be stranded? The, the CNG tanks uh, spaces are so few and far between. Okay, uh, let me say this. It's going to be, if you do conversion, it's going to be dual. So if the your CNG... Uh, 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 fuel is low, you have option of petrol. And uh, so there is no strand, you can't be stranded. So when you move, and as the government ramps up this infrastructure in terms of the stations, those fares are maybe less. So I, I don't think people should have this way. Then the, on the issue of viability, again, is the assurance that the government is uh, incentivizing the public transportation sector. So once the public transportation sector embraces it, is going to encourage investors to invest in the... I'm also thinking about it. Putting up the gas station. For You have one in Arepo here. It's been here for about three, four years. There's another one at Agidimbi now. The last Amaja is on. And I think Lagos is having almost about 12 or more than that now. And I don't understand the Bile gas is also thinking of putting at many of the stations. You have pipelines along Agege Muto Road. You have along Ikorodoro you have in uh, Lagos Island. So all those areas where you have the gas pipelines, that means the gas can get there, it can be compressed. Because the gas has to first be compressed before they, are trans, uh, uh, they can be 
discharge into the vehicle, into the skids. So I think the viability is not the issue. What is the issue now is the adoption. It's for people to adopt it. Now, when you adopt it, you are, I, I spoke with one of my partner who told me, <laughs> he will also asked me a question, how does he get into this thing? Because a friend told him he has CNG and he has a petrol gas tanks now. So he's not even talking about scarcity. So the two are at full tank, he switches when he sees where there's oh, no Oh, so you can also do that? Yes, hybrid. Can, hybrid. Yeah. It's going to come as hybrid if you do conversion. So it's a win-win. Okay. It's just the adoption that is the yeah. key issue now. Well, uh, Mr. Lagbemi, just, uh, okay, we're out of time, but let me just ask you this. Incentives for investors. Uh, you know, Dr. Kwefa has been talking about, you know, he wants to get into the business as well. I think maybe I'll go talk to a bank as well to get into it. But what's the incentive for the businessman? What are they, what are they, okay, make us an elevator pitch. Of, uh, so somebody wants to adopt, uh, someone wants to get into the business. What's, what's, the, what's, the, what's the viability for the fellow who wants to get into it? Yes, uh, the federal government has already made I rolled out a number of incentives, um, including uh, a VAT and uh, import duty waiver for the sector. Uh, we've also rolled out uh, incentives for the midstream side uh, when we give concessionary gas pricing that allows recovery and uh, recovery of investment, return on investment to be much higher than it used to be, such that investment in the, downs in the midstream and downstream, downstream side there can be a faster break even points because of um, lower. Uh, impute gas cost. This was announced by NMDPRA in, in April. In addition to this, uh, the federal government have of course also begun to do this demand in the, uh, demand uh, stimulation, be it by ensuring that federal MDAs acquire CNG enabled vehicles or ensuring that the sector itself begins to grow, either in form of refueling as well as um, enhancing platforms that utilize uh, uh, CNG. These are incentives for the sector. These are incentives for the businessmen that will come into the sector. And I can assure them that currently this, the return on investment of the sector is quite high relative to that of petrol, that's PMS and diesel. But it's going to continue to remain that way because we, have, we believe in a consistency of policy. It's not just about ensuring that it's attractive right now and a change in course down the road. For example, the concessionary gas pricing put in place by NMDPR is assured for the next five years and renewable for another five. So you at least can trust that this will be in uh, uh, available to the businessman for the next 10 years. So I think this is something that is uh, quite commendable. And uh, like I said, Nigeria is ready for business. Uh, we look forward to businessmen and investors coming into the sector, investing in the upstream angle in terms of gas supply, the midstream when it comes to uh, mother stations, daughter stations, as well on the downstream side. Mr. Lagwe, if you can hear me. Uh, just, just a second. O on that same issue, <clears throat> my apologies, um, we have a number of car manufacturing vehicles in the in country, and Dr. Okwefa, you speak to that as well. We have a number of organizations in the country that produce vehicles, some of them supported by state governments, such as Lagos State, supporting one like that. Um, we have a number of them, you know, in the southeast, in the southwest, and, you know, all over the place like that. What conversations are we having with them to facilitate this? Because... I'm looking at something that I believe you are talking about in the long run. You know, it's a, it's a conversation for the long haul. So are we having conversations with them that can encourage them to sustain, you know, the business and sustain um, CNG-powered vehicles exclusively in the country from their factories? Absolutely. So we, in the honor of the first acquisition that was done by the federal government uh, through the Federal Ministry of Finance, uh, four uh, automobile companies located in Nigeria have been engaged to do the acquisition of the CNG buses and tricycles. Uh, we opened the factory for uh, the tricycle in, um, uh, we launched it in May, on May 2030, uh, 2024, uh, in Shagamo, where the CNG tricycles have been coupled and assembled, and will soon even be done. They'll be doing much more higher local manufacturing. We did the factory inspection tours of uh, the Meccano factory that's also located along the Lagos Ibada Expressway, as well as the Kojo factory located in, uh, in, in Onicha, where the, uh, the Oma brand of buses that were donated to the state house have been produced. 
So we are engaged uh, with the local manufacturers, uh, likes of Innocent already doing CNG buses, and some of them have been supervised with the Nigerian Army, um, to, as well as the private sector. So we know uh, even um, uh, Nord in, uh, in Lagos is doing a range of CNG trucks as well as CNG sedans. These companies are doing uh, their best, and with the incentives that we are provided, especially with respect to the waiver, import duty waiver, as well as the uh, VAT waiver for the sector, we think they can grow. Okay. And we also know that the demand that we're providing to them also allows them to continue to sustain their growth. But ultimately, the biggest policy of the federal government that is going to enable the auto industry is not even the CNG program by itself. It is the financial, uh, the credit economy that the president has spoken to a lot about that will actually stimulate and ignite the auto sector. Okay. So if you think about it, their counterparts overseas are not waiting for anybody. Uh, uh, absolutely. They're it, with cash. It, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's an endless conversation, really. But uh, let, let me take uh, uh, Dr. Puefa's comments on the same issue for the Okay, um, let me say that... Uh, I'm not too sure. I couldn't hear Dr. Ma, uh, Engineer Ma very well. There is also a credit option. You can get the conversion kit on credit basis, and as you buy your CNG gas, you pay back. So if you don't have the broker, that's the option I'm, I'm, I'm opting for. I'll just get the thing on credit and pay as I buy my foil. Now, on the issue of the car manufacturing, um, I was privileged to attend the launching of one tricycle plant just a few kilometers away from, from your station, where they are manufacturing CNG. I'm aware Mekino Auto is doing CNG, Jet Motors is doing CNG, uh, Innocent is doing CNG, Ashok Leland Automobile Lego is also doing CNG, La Rechitu Motors just commissioned their yeah, that they also into CNG. So the automobile industry is also aware of the need, because that's the direction now. It doesn't mean we will not use petrol or diesel vehicles, but it has come to be part of the major uh, uh, energy mix. And in fact, it's for uh, energy security. Do you see a time, lastly, where there is a policy of government that says CNG or nothing? We're getting to that stage because already in Europe, I think, is it Sweden, Australia or so? They've already taken a decision that no more petrol. It's either CNG or electric. So whether we like it or not, by the, getting close to 2030, they're going to start hearing those kind of policies. Yes. Well, I have to thank you for this uh, conversation this thank morning, you. educating us on the viability of CNG vehicles in the country. Dr. Kaudi Okwefa is Executive Director of the Center for Sustainable, for Sustainable Mobility and Access Development, as well as uh, Engineer Michael Oluagbe, who is Project Director and CEO of the Presidential Compressed Natural Gas Initiative. He joined us all the way. Thank you, gentlemen, for being here this morning.